Hello and welcome. We saw in the previous course that the purpose of predictive modeling and artificial intelligence is for human beings to outsource the responsibility of decision making to the machine. Unfortunately, it is not that simple. The modeler and the users of the model will still have to make important choices. The first choice that the user of the model will have to make in the case of a classification is a compromise between two values which are precision and recall. Here we see what is called a confusion matrix, which is the expression of the results of a classification model by comparing predictions and truth. In ordinate, we have the observed truth, the reality, and in abscissa, we have the prediction of the model. Ideally, the prediction of our model will be in line with the reality. If the reality is positive and the prediction of our model is positive, we have a true positive. If the reality is negative and the prediction of our model is negative, we have a true negative. Unfortunately, no model is perfect, and our model will make mistakes, errors. If the reality is negative and the prediction of our model is positive, we have a false positive or a type 1 error. If the reality is positive and the prediction of our model is negative, we have a false negative or a type 2 error. Precision is the proportion of true positives in all positive predictions. So that's the measure of the accuracy of my prediction. At maximum precision, all our positive predictions are real positive, but we are not sure we have identified all of them. Recall is the proportion of true positives among the entire population of real positives. It is therefore the measure of the identification of all positives. At maximum recall, all positives have been identified at the cost of a number of false positives, therefore a loss in accuracy. Ideally, we would look for a maximum recall for maximum precision. Unfortunately, those two values are antinomic. An increase in precision can only be done at the expense of the recall and vice versa. However, it is possible to control the proportion between those two values. This choice, which is requested from the user of the model, is critical. Because of the difference in weight between type 1 errors and type 2 errors, Errors do not always carry the same weight, meaning they do not always have the same consequences. Let's take a simple example, one of medical diagnosis. If we make a type 1 error, a false positive, we diagnose a disease that does not exist. The consequence is a series of additional tests, a few days of anxiety, and at the end, good news. If we make type 2 error, a false negative, we diagnose the absence of a disease that, however, exists. The consequence is a lack of treatment, the development of the disease, and a possible fatal consequence. The two errors do not have the same consequences. They do not have the same weight. In this example, we will probably want to avoid type 2 errors at all costs so favor recall. This will be done at the cost of a lesser precision and therefore an increase in false positives type 1 errors. Choosing the proportion between precision and recall is the first major decision of the modeler. The modeler's second responsibility is to avoid overfitting, which is probably his worst enemy, his true nemesis. To understand what overfitting is, 
let's see a simple example of a sinusoidal distribution that we want to represent using a polynomial function. At degree zero, an horizontal line does not model anything. For any value of x, y will always be the same. With a degree one, we get a linear regression that misses most of the nuances of the distribution. We say that we are then underfitting. With a degree three, we follow almost perfectly the distribution. This is probably our best model. If, however, we are tempted to do better and push beyond three to a degree nine, for example, our cost function will want to go through all observations. We will then find, within our sample, patterns that do not exist in the real universe. Our model is no longer generalized, which is its objective. We are then overfitting. Underfitting is also called bias. Overfitting is also known as variance. Once again, both are antinomic. If one decreases, the other one increases. But we are looking for a model with the lowest possible value for both measures. We are therefore condemned to another compromise. This is the bias-variance dilemma. To avoid overfitting, there are many methods, the most common of which is, from the beginning of the project, to set aside a test sample. Once completed, the model will be tested with observations that have not been used in its development. Any desire for overfitting will then normally be detected. In conclusion, we see that far from evading the responsibility for choice and decision, the modeler is subject to two major decisions that lead him to evolve in a space bounded by precision and recall, underfitting and overfitting. These choices are important because carried out early and not questioned afterwards, their consequences will be repeated throughout the execution of the model. If you would like some examples of disasters due to modeling errors, I recommend Cathy O'Neill's book, Weapons of Math Destruction which is particularly instructive. What we should remember is that modelers have to make choices between precision and recall and between underfitting and overfitting. Would it be possible, however, to automate the avoidance of overfitting? This is the core subject of machine learning that we will study in the next course. See you soon.